This is how to do a valve adjustment on a 2005 Dodge Ram 2500 with a 5.9 diesel. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's pretty much the same from like, what's it fucking? When they start the 12 valve early 90s into the mid 2000s, like 2007, I think is when they stopped making the 5.9. But it's basically the same procedure. They're the same footprint engine, so works for all those. The only thing you're gonna need to make sure you have before you start is a set of feeler gauges. Um, other than that, if you can dodge a wrench, you can probably do this. There's six bolts on the valve cover. Two here, two here, and two further in the back that you get with the wrench. Just loosen them. Then you're gonna need to come around the back of the valve cover, reach with the wrench, and there are two more under the firewall. Once you have all six bolts on the valve cover removed, pull this wire out of the way. You may have more because I'm not sure how much of this is original, and then. Take the oil cap off and lift. So earlier there were only four bolts. Here there are six. Just keep track of your bolts. If you need to put them in a tray, put them in a tray. And then I'm gonna use an eight millimeter ratcheting wrench to take off this breather port thing. What do you wanna call it? A Fleet Guard US patent pending USA serialized part. No, it's just a breather of some kind. Like, probably like a crankcase. <laughs> crankcase, positive crankcase then, PC, PCCD, whatever the fuck they call it. Anyways, that, this just twists out, it has a rubber garment. What? Rubber garment. Like so. Um, just get it out of the way however you can. Twist these hose off, probably. That just pops out like that, and then this can actually probably yank off like that, and then that comes off. Don't be a bitch about it like I was. Anyhow, now if I'm right. The valve cover should just come lift up in the back, like so, and bring it forward. So we clear these rockers. Holy shit, this is gonna take forever. Okay, people freak out about their comments, but this is why. On the top of it is your valve cover. Cover, it's like a valve cover cover. It has all your information that you need to know. So if you're ever buying one, you can use this as a reference. Check fucking other numbers too, but right here we got valve lash cold. We got 010 intake and 020 exhaust. That means 10 thousandths intake and 20 thousandths exhaust so we need to adjust the lash and I'll show you up there what it is and how to check for it all right we are under the truck we have this ratchet right here attached to the with a 15 mil socket attached to one of the bolts on the crank pulley and we're just pushing on it to turn the engine over we get to a certain point on the engine where there's a mark right and if you look closely it's 
says top dead center. So, um, I thought it was somewhere else, but apparently it's quite obvious. So I'm gonna take some white out. We're gonna take this wrench off. Take some white out, mark that, All right? And then I'm gonna come up front of the pulley, bring it down so we can see it from the top. So now we know where our mark is. Okay, so now that we have the mark lined up, 12 o'clock, the top dead center marked at 12 o'clock, we're gonna check for number one piston, which is right under here, at top dead center, right? So they say if you move both of these, then you're at top dead center. So we know we are in the right spot with that top dead center mark lined up at 12 o'clock and these two rocker arms moving. Now, with it there, we can check intake valves one, two and four. So one, two, and then four, we skip three, and four is right there. And then exhaust, one, three, and five. One, three, and five. Now this doesn't really make very much sense, and if somebody wants to explain to me the engineering of a Cummins and why it's not balanced from front to back, um, on like, because you think it would be, I'm not gonna try to confuse you, actually, never mind. But, so. We're gonna try intake. We're gonna check our exhaust first. We're gonna get out a 30 thousandths feeler. I'm getting pretty good at this. 30 thousandths feeler, and we're checking. One, three, and five. So here's one. We're gonna take a 30 thousandths. You can see if it goes under. You really gotta get it horizontal. It doesn't appear to go under, so we're gonna check it. We're gonna check the next one, which is two, or actually three, I apologize, three. We're gonna check that one. And that one goes under, so it's kinda, kinda tight, but, and then five. Again, we're still on exhaust. That's the one before the back. I don't know, they're pretty close, but I'm gonna adjust them anyway. So we're gonna get a, they're supposed to be at 20. So we're gonna get our 20. One on one. You can see that slides under really easy. So that one's probably pretty close. To adjust, you just loosen this 14 mil. Like so. Tighten the adjuster down to get it closer, away to move it away. Anyways, you just want it to slide just barely underneath, like so. And then this gets torqued to 18 foot-pounds. I trust my calibrated wrist. Maybe one more, right there. And then this should still slide out, but you should have the little resistance. And it should be like that, I suppose. It feels kind of sloppy, but that's what they say. And then we're gonna go to, we're gonna, I'm just gonna adjust them all. You can check them if you won't feel like you wanna not go through adjusting them all. But I figure we're here already. We might as well adjust them. So we're intake, we're one, two, and four. That's correct, yeah. Is what we're gonna be adjusting. Intakes are the smaller ones. So we're taking a 10 thousandths which is our set point, I suppose you would say. If I can find it. 20 thousandths, 
8 thousandths, 10 thousandths. We're going to set it underneath one. Right? <clears throat> now this is a 10 and it fits just about right, but I want to make it exactly right. So same deal as the other one. Just like that. Anyways, you just follow that procedure for the remaining two. This is very important. You rotated the engine 360 degrees from top dead center to get to bottom dead center. When you have bottom dead center, one of these rockers, your exhaust should be locked up. Your intake's still gonna move, but your exhaust will not. And then you can proceed at bottom dead center to do the remaining exhaust valves of two, right? Four, and then six, the furthest one back. And then your intake valves of three, sorry, small ones, three, five, and then six. All the way in the back and you'll know you got them at bottom dead center because six will have the rocker arms loose again so anyways you've seen the adjustment at top dead center it's the same for bottom dead center all right now all i'm saying i'm just gonna zip through reinstallation it's a good uh practice to go back and check all your adjusters make sure they're tight you know make sure nothing's backing out and everything looks right Put it back on, like so, the valve cover that is. All right, got all your tools out of there. Put it back together, ran out of battery, but it just goes back together the way you took it off, in reverse. Anyways, done. I'm gonna do a quick crank start, make sure nothing awful sounds, like nothing. So. Anyway, sounds good. Sounds a little more purry, actually. Like, a little more like, 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 <laughs> anyway. Sounds good, uh, pretty easy to do. Mine weren't too bad, I've seen some bad ones. Uh, uh, if you have a way of scanning it, go out for a drive, make sure your EEG T's or uh, what's another thing you can check for. Mainly your EEG T's is the only thing I think it's gonna affect, but even if you had a way out of whack, I don't think it'd be too bad. Uh, but that's it.